Hallelujah. Hey guys, welcome to the Critical Beauty Salon. So the Miss Earth 2019 pageant took place last October 26 in Manila, Philippines, and Nelly Spimentel of Puerto Rico won the coveted title. If you want to know what I think of the show, don't go away, I'll be right back. <laughs> The pageant opened with the 85 candidates dressed in outfits representing their country's national flowers. Flowers were the main theme of this year's pageant. Honestly, I thought that the opening number and intro was disappointing. It felt rushed as host James Deacon announced the name of a country every three seconds, which didn't give the televiewers ample time to see the face of every contestant. I wondered too if the judges or the spectators had a good look of all the contestants since I didn't see any giant TV monitors anywhere inside the venue. I also think that the big LED monitors that flashed the names of the countries and animated floral patterns clashed with the contestants sashaying down the runway. Actually, all those bright patterns kind of hurt my eyes. Oh, and I didn't know that the island nation of Fiji has changed the spelling of the country to Fuji. Anyway, six of the contestants, whom I assume were the best dancers in the group, took center stage and performed individual dance moves, including Miss Australia, who did some tumbling. Since this year's theme is flowers, this explains why the contestants came out in outfits bedecked with all sorts of flowers, and why the focal point of the stage is a massive prop that resembled a flower. The pageant took place at Cove Manila, a massive entertainment space with indoor beach club and nightclub located inside the new resort hotel Okada Manila. The stage is what I would call a thrust stage, which is extended wall to wall with audience on just one side on the front. For the first time in the history of the pageant, the show started in the afternoon at four o'clock to be exact. This is the same stage that was used for the Miss Philippines Earth 2019 pageant last July, which also took place in the afternoon. From a distance, the stage did not look big enough to accommodate all 85 contestants, but when the camera pans closer to the contestants, you'll notice that there was more than enough space for the girls to move around to avoid colliding with each other. I think the venue this year is a welcome change, a major upgrade from previous venues. There was a good reason to start the show at four in the afternoon, to use natural light, which meant saving energy, and to allow the audience to be awed by the column-free, 30-meter-high UV-protected glass dome covering an area of 9,000 square meters. The nightclub also boasts of the company's first six-ring kinetic chandelier, which can produce 10,000 kinetic and visual effects. And as sunset approached, the audience was treated to a visual feast when the sun finally set and the lighting of the floral background turned from solemn white to incandescent green. In my vlog entitled Five Things I Hate About Miss Earth, I mentioned that the judging panel seldom consists of former Miss Earth title holders or any former beauty queens for that matter. Last year, they had zero beauty queens, unless you count a former Mr. Bisexual World Philippines. And this year, they did not invite any former beauty queen. Seven people sat at this year's judging panel, and five of them are Filipinos. Carousel Productions Executive Vice President Lorraine Shook, Leo Valdez, a renowned Filipino theater actor, Ernie Lopez, an environmentalist slash travel blogger, Lori Faye Magadan Otaza, an environmental activist and a city mayor, and Cecil Guidote Alvarez, the founder of PETA, which stands for Philippine Educational Theater Association, not to be confused with another PETA, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, although I wish they would invite a representative from the world's most influential animal rights group. The girls wore swimsuits of different colors and cuts. There were some in bikinis and some in one piece. There were some girls in top shape, some in mediocre shape, and some in bad shape. Host James Deacon stated that the top 20 were selected based on their prejudging scores and the scores from the Miss Earth organization. We know that the girls were prejudged in three competitions, each of which constituted 30% of the total score. 
face and poise, figure and form, and intelligence and environmental awareness. The remaining 10% is attitude. Now, I have a question. Did the winners of the Best Eco Video, Miss England, and Best Eco Media, Miss Thailand, necessarily receive high scores in the three preliminary competitions? What do you think? Please comment below. Anyway, the top 20 included the contestants from these countries. In my vlog, my top 20 favorites for Miss Earth 2019, I have these countries on my list. Seven on the list did not make the official top 20 during the finals, Venezuela, Mongolia, Germany, Vietnam, Ukraine, Nepal, and India. To me, the biggest shocker of all was the exclusion of India's Tejaswini Managna, whom I thought was a standout winner in the group. I'm still trying to figure out the reason she failed the cut. Could it be that she didn't do well in all three preliminary competitions? Maybe she did, but there were other girls who fared better than her? Did she have any attitude problem that might have pissed off the organizers? I really don't know. Unless you're one of the chaperones who have spent four weeks with the girls, you really can't make any absolute judgment on their individual behavior and performance. I feel bad that India did not make the cut, but there's no doubt that she represented her country very well and that she was loved and admired by many Filipinos. Now about Ghana, Abena Evelyn Apia, she was number two on my list. Is it just me or did anyone notice that she didn't seem as energetic on the finals as she was during the preliminaries? Even though her gown was sparkling, you can't say the same with her stage projection. Maybe this was the reason she didn't make the top four? After the top 20 were called, they had to return backstage to change into their evening wear, while guest performer Chantel entertained the audience. Now, about Chantel, to be honest, I have never heard of her, so I had to Google her and I found out that she is originally from Barbados, like Rihanna, and that she and Rihanna were in cadet corps together and Chantel was actually Rihanna's drill sergeant. Interesting. Chantel performed and judged for the first time in 2017, I would have preferred to see a different performer this year or even a dance performance by a local dance group and that would have been so much more interesting. In the long gown competition, my favorites were Chile, Portugal, Ghana, Czech Republic, Colombia, Thailand, and New Zealand. But I think the best for me was Czech Republic. Notice that Filipinos call it long gown instead of evening gown. Why is that? Filipino fans, please comment below. There were some gowns that wore the girls instead of the other way around, like England, whose stunning gown just sort of like draped her, USA, who kept holding up the lower part of her gown, and Netherlands, whose high and low romp dress made her look like a hoochie mama. When it came for the top 20 to be reduced to top 10, each of the top 10 finalists called had to pick a hashtag from a bowl. Of these 10 finalists, only Russia used an interpreter. Since I don't understand Russian, I'm not sure if the interpreter did a good job or not, but based on the English translation, Russia's answer was not that strong. Regarding her hashtag, Earth, she said, Our Earth is the biggest part of the universe. Our Earth is where we live, so we have to save our Earth. We have to work hard with our soul to save our Earth. Das Vidanya, Russia, but Earth is not the biggest part of the universe. Do you want to know what the biggest thing in the universe is? It's a super cluster known as the Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall. It's so big that light takes about 10 billion years to move across the structure. My favorites in this hashtag segment were Puerto Rico, USA, Netherlands, Chile, and Nigeria. But the best was USA because of her great delivery and good job in transitioning the word influence to her advocacy. Mabuhay Philippines and to all the families here supporting their candidates. Um, influence is extremely important to me. Uh, my advocacy is working with an organization called Enactus and I actually implemented a recycling program at an elementary school. And with that, I've been able to influence them to get excited about taking care of our environment. And they have influenced me to give back to my community even more. And that is why I'm here working for them and showing them that if you want anything, you can do it. On a side note, Czech Republic Clara Vavruskova resembles a young Melania Trump. No wonder I like her. The hashtag portion was followed by a second performance 
by Chantelle, which I thought was okay, though I think she should have changed her outfit like her backup dancers had done. Host James Deacon announced the top four finalists in this order. Belarus, Czech Republic, USA, and Puerto Rico, who was genuinely surprised. Each of them had to respond to the final question, and the question was, how would you convince those who don't believe in climate change that it is a serious problem? Puerto Rico gave the best answer based on her good delivery, good content, and the sincere and convincing tone of her voice. First of all, good evening, everybody. I would have to say that addressing this issue of people not believing in climate change is more of a matter of lack of education, and not only edu lack of education, but also the ignorance and not wanting to inform themselves of the fact that we are living on a planet that is our biggest home, and we have taken advantage of it instead of putting back what it is giving to us making notable leaders and a lot of influencers engage with themselves and becoming better people is the most important thing to do. The outgoing queen, Phuong Khan from Vietnam, did her final walk as Miss Earth 2018, looking divine in a beautiful white ball gown. She was joined moments later by two of her elemental queens, Miss Earth Air 2018, Melanie Mater of Austria, and Miss Earth Water 2018, Valeria Ayos of Colombia. However, inquiring minds want to know why Miss Earth Fire 2018 Melissa Flores of Mexico did not show up. Was she not invited? Did her national director go broke and therefore was not able to pay for her airfare? Or she did not really want to go? If you know anything, please comment below. Belarus was crowned Miss Earth Fire. Czech Republic was crowned Miss Earth Water. Miss USA was crowned Miss Earth Air. And the rest is history. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. <laughs> Anything for the perspiration? Can we have the makeup guy? I'm getting stressed out here. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Earth 2019 goes to. <gasps> yeah. In my vlog, my top 20 favorites for Miss Earth 2019, I mentioned that Nellie's could win Puerto Rico's first ever Miss Earth crown, and that's exactly what happened. Nellie's victory has made Puerto Rico as the first country to have won all the big international pageants. The country now has five Miss Universes, two Miss Worlds, two Miss Internationals, one Miss Supranational, two Miss Intercontinentals, and one Miss Earth. The Philippines proved once again to be an outstanding host country. There were no allegations of sexual harassment this time and no stories of food poisoning either. And the schedule of activities is twice as long and hectic as that of another major pageant, which will take place in Atlanta starting November 28. But the best part of competing in Miss Earth when it is held in the Philippines is that there will never be a shortage of sponsors who are willing to donate their goods and services to the contestants. And that's a good thing. Oh, and host James Deacon didn't yell the names of the contestants this time. Good job, James. We hope to see you host again next year. And there you have it, my review of the 2019 Miss Earth pageant. Do you agree or disagree? Comment below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, like, or share. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe and hit the bell below to receive instant notification for the next video. A big thanks to the new subscribers for helping this channel grow. Until the next time, guys. Bye.